Thank you, Lena. The number of COVID-19 infections here in the United States increased 47% last week compared to the previous week, despite a pause in testing during the holiday. That's according to Johns Hopkins University, 47%. The Omicron variant is now responsible for 73% of all new infections. Joining us now via Zoom is Dr. Sunil Joshi. He's the president of the Duval County Medical Society Foundation. Good morning, thanks for being with us. Good morning, Jen. I feel like there's a little overload uh, for so many people about these different variants. Would you explain what we know about Omicron, rate of spread, for example, chance of severity among those un unvaccinated? Yeah, so first of all, you know, I think it is important to know we talk about how transmissible this particular variant is. If you look back at the original uh, COVID-19 uh, virus that we had coming through, if somebody had it, that person was likely to spread it to about two to three different people. With the Delta variant, um, someone could spread it to about seven different people. With the Omicron variant, right now the data suggests, at least out of South Africa, that one person can spread it to about 10 different people. So um, it does have a, a significant transmissibility, so it does go from one person to the next relatively quickly compared to what we had seen originally. Um, but, but the good news is it does not appear to be as severe as the Delta variant was in terms of causing hospitalizations um, or severe illnesses. Um, but again, we got to keep in mind a lot of that data is from other parts of the world and may not necessarily be the case here. And the more and more people who are infected, uh, the more likely you are to see an uptick in hospitalizations. But, but right now, that data is actually a little bit more promising. What about the risk of breakthrough cases? Because we are hearing that there have been a number of breakthrough cases. Yes, and definitely there can be breakthrough cases with this variant, just like with any other variant, whether you're vaccinated or have a natural immunity. But keep in mind, folks who are vaccinated and have received the booster are significantly less likely to require hospitalization um, you know, or have severe illness, even if they do get uh, Omicron. Would you explain who should receive monoclonal treatment and when? Yeah, so monoclonal antibody treatment, again, remember, is for those who have tested positive over the age of 12 who are having mild to moderate uh, symptoms who may be at risk of having severe uh, disease. In other words, folks who may be at risk of requiring hospitalization um, or even uh, at risk of dying from the, from the virus. And remember, here in Northeast Florida, you do have to have proof of a positive test before you can receive the monoclonal treatments. Um, and another thing that I think is worth noting is that the Omicron variant may not be as susceptible to some of the more common monoclonal antibodies that are out there. So just keep that in mind too, because some of the mutations that have occurred for this Omicron variant are not necessarily matching with the monoclonal antibody treatments. There are some, there's one in particular that's a little bit better for the Omicron variant, and that's what we're trying to get here in Florida. Okay, and we don't have it yet. And I just want to be very clear about this. So that if you if you test positive, you're unvaccinating, you don't have any symptoms, do you still recommend monoclonal antibody treatment or no? If you are asymptomatic and you tested positive and, uh, and you're unvaccinated, no, I don't recommend the monoclonal antibody treatment at that point, unless, of course, you are at risk of severe disease. That's a different story, and that's something that would be worth discussing with your healthcare provider. Otherwise, I would I, at that point I would I would start with the isolation process. And for those who are fully vaccinated, should they get monoclonal if they test positive? Yeah. So again, you know, the the people eligible for the monoclonal antibody, it's not based on vaccination status. So even if you are fully vaccinated, if you're symptomatic and you are at risk of severe disease as a result of this virus, you are still eligible to receive the monoclonal antibody treatment and you should look for it at that point. If you need to test, are at home tests as accurate, do you think, as the tests available at testing sites? Yeah, so PCR testing, which is what you would get at a, at a lot of the clinics and hospitals, are definitely the gold standard for testing. The rapid testing is not necessarily as accurate. However, if you are symptomatic and you use one of these at home uh, rapid tests, uh, the chances of you picking up the positive result is is significantly higher. So um, there's a 15% false negative um, rate with these at home tests, but those are typically seen in folks who are asymptomatic, who may have just been exposed to somebody um, who has COVID-19. And so you get a test and if your test is negative, it may be a false negative, which is why you should test yourself again um, at about three to five days after your last exposure. Just important information. Dr. Joshi, thank you for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Jen.
And we want to remind our viewers, a few months ago, consumer investigator Lauren Verno put an at-home test to the test, and she found that for around $25, you can get results in about 15 minutes or less. The tests that you find in a store are antigen tests, but the standard for most health departments, as you just heard Dr. Joshi mention, is a PCR test. Doctors say the results are fairly accurate in symptomatic patients, but if a test comes back negative and you have symptoms, it would be worth it to go and get a PCR test. Test. You can find this story and other information, by the way, about the coronavirus on our website, newsforjax.com.